It's currently May in the Pacific Northwest, and like many cool state residents, it's the time of year I start thinking about air conditioning, but we've got a lot of options. From your basic, easy to install single hose portable to a much more capable portable, this one with two hoses in one, to your good old fashioned window unit, and then finally, the split system. Now, before getting into the specific types, I want to run over the basics of compressed gas refrigeration. And I get it, Nobody likes the six paragraph history of the dish section on food blogs before the actual recipe. But trust me, having a basic understanding of how these things work will make your decision regarding what type of unit to buy a whole lot easier. And one of the easiest ways I can think of to demonstrate that is using an even simpler device, my air compressor here. So let's think about this as like step one in the refrigeration cycle. We have our low pressure atmospheric air, the compressor here takes it to 175 psi in the tank and while it's doing that let's pay attention on the thermal camera to what happens to both these tanks and the fittings leading to the tanks. All right, did you notice how warm that gas got as it compressed into these cylinders? This moves us into what I'll call step two or kind of what happens in the condenser coils. That hot gas needs to radiate that heat out into the environment, a step that normally should take place outside of your house. So we're just gonna let this entire unit just sort of cool down to ambient temperature again, but we're not gonna release the gas just yet. All right, it's been about 30 minutes, so the whole unit's cooled down now. So let's take a look at that thermal camera again and see what happens as we release or expand that gas. This is gonna be analogous to what happens uh, inside your evaporator coils, which should be on the inside of your house. Did you notice those tanks cooling down as the compressed gas was released? That's the refrigeration cycle. It's the continual compression of gas on one side and expansion of gas on the other that allows us to move heat from one area to another. And here's that occurring in real time on this Medea U. We've got the condenser coils full of hot refrigerant fresh out of the compressor on the back, radiating heat into the environment, and the same gas, now with much less heat, expanding and absorbing heat from inside your home. Does that all make sense? Compression makes gas hot while expansion makes it cool. And where we perform each of those steps determines what areas warm up and what areas cool down. Considering all of that, it would make sense for the hot and coincidentally noisy steps of the refrigeration cycle to occur outside of the building envelope. Unfortunately, that's not what happens here in the case of our first AC option, the single host portable. And I'll cut right to it. This is generally going to be your worst option if noise and efficiency are your primary concerns. The hot compression phase takes place indoors, which also means the noisy compressor is indoors. But that's not even the worst part. Remember all the heat generated during compression needs to be vented somewhere? Uh, well, portable ACs do this by blowing room air over the condenser coils and out the window via these flexible ducts. That alone doesn't sound so bad, but what replaces the hot air expelled out the window? It's warm air from outside the room. Let me show you. So what I've got set up here is some little streamers in the air gap that's created when you open the window to make way for this vent. And what I wanna show you guys is that airflow that occurs uh, when we push hot air out this window and then inevitably have to suck warm air back in to replace it. So do we see these little streamers here kind of getting sucked back in the room? That's the inevitable result of these single host portables. We push hot air out and we suck warm air right back in. This is exactly why you'll often hear people complain that on hot days, these will run and run, yet the room won't cool down. If you're stuck going this route, consider investing in one of these. 
It's an insulating sleeve made specifically for AC exhausts. They've reduced the amount of heat radiating back into the room through the otherwise uninsulated hose. They don't solve the fundamental problem with single hose units, but at least we're making the best of a bad situation. So why are they so popular? It's because of convenience. They're just about the only option where you can remove it from the box and have it up and running in less than 10 minutes. Furthermore, portables are really your only option if you have horizontal sliders. At the end of the day, most people stick with their first impressions. They'll buy these, quickly install them, and in a few minutes have cold air blowing in their hot room, so they're happy. When I first moved to Seattle, I purchased one of them and I liked it. I didn't think about what it was doing to my electric bill or why, despite running all day, my rooms weren't getting cool. All I knew was that I plugged it in and got cold air. Finally asking the question led me to this, a dual hose inverter powered portable. It's the next step up in terms of noise and efficiency. They're generally more expensive than single hose ACs, but absolutely worth the difference in price. Like the previous unit, they're relatively easy to install and work in both horizontal and vertically sliding windows. We do still have the issue regarding compressor placement. It's still indoors, which isn't ideal, but by using two hoses, we solve the glaring defect of single hose units. We are no longer drawing warm air into the room to cool the condenser coils. There's an intake and an exhaust hose. This means they will continue to cool effectively even when it's hot outside. Furthermore, this model from Medea uses a variable speed compressor, meaning that it can slowly start up and slow down. No more kicking on uh, that many people with older AC units are used to. For people with horizontally sliding windows that need an easy or temporary install, this style of air conditioner is going to be your best bet. But for those with double hung or vertical sliders, we've got an even better option. The good old fashioned window unit. Some people think they're ugly or outdated, but in terms of efficiency and effectiveness, let me tell you, they beat portables hands down. Let's start with step one of the refrigeration cycle, compression. Remember the hot and noisy sequence of events? That all happens outside, on this side of the unit. On a modern model, like this Medea U, we can even drop the window in between the two, greatly cutting down on noise. And the whole issue regarding pulling warm air into the room to cool the condenser coils, it doesn't exist here. We simply blow outside air over the coils outside of the home. There is zero airflow between the hot and cold side of the unit. And while the noisy compressor is still close to the room, it's at least outside, unlike our portables. For those with horizontal sliders and who don't mind a little more hassle setting up, this could be your best bet. They're very effective, relatively quiet, and pretty efficient. If you've got vertical sliders like me, you can still make these work, but with a lot more effort. I'll link my full review of this particular unit with its complete install here. But if you wanna go hardcore, I'm talking maximum install difficulty resulting in maximum performance. I've got one more for you. It's the mini split. I installed this one from Pioneer about two years ago, and since then I've been blown away by its performance. Let's run through the refrigeration cycle as it pertains to this style of AC. First, compression. That happens far away from the room being cooled. All that noise and heat generated in this step is well outside of the building envelope. When you're indoors, you literally cannot hear it running. Step two, radiating all that heat also fully occurs outdoors. No sucking in outside air or doing it near a window. Everything we theoretically want outside far away from us is outside far away from us. Step three, expanding the refrigerant. This occurs right where we want it, inside the room. And because the only thing left to do is absorb room heat via the evaporator coils, the only noise we hear is the blower, which is no louder than a table fan. Most of the time, you won't even notice it's running. So let's recap. Our worst option is almost always going to be the single host portable.
They're noisy, inefficient, and not very effective when it's hot out. Just about the only thing I can put in the pro column here is their ease of install. Our next best option is the dual hose portable, preferably inverter powered. They're more efficient than single hose units, and because this one is powered by a variable speed compressor, much quieter. Installing two hoses, or in this case a duo hose, is a little harder than installing one, but not by much. These are a great option for those with horizontally sliding windows. If you live in a home with vertical sliders, don't overlook old school window units. They're almost always more efficient than portables, and depending on how they're powered, are often much quieter. Finally, if you've got the time, money, and or DIY ability, you can't go wrong with a mini split. They're by far the most efficient, effective, and quietest way to retrofit air conditioning into an otherwise uncooled home. Okay, hope that cleared at least something up for those bewildered by the wide array of AC choices you're often presented with. I will have links to everything mentioned in the description. Any questions, drop them below, and I'll try to get as many answered as possible. But more than that, I want to know what you guys think. Was I unfair to portables? Are mini splits overrated? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments.